Now, blood donation is a crucial service all over the world, but less than 1% of South Africans are active blood donors. This is according to the South African National Blood Service, which is licensed to provide blood transfusion services to the country. Hi, to Dumelang. A very good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we look at uh, the blood donation in the country and its importance as tomorrow marks uh, World uh, Blood uh, Dona Donor Day. Now joining us in studio is the South African National Blood Services Senior Marketing Communications and Brand Manager Tandi Musupie. She's joining us in studio this evening. Ms. Musupie, much appreciated for coming in. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Tabo, and thank you for having us. Much appreciated. I mean, let's start the conversation by just looking at the work of the South African uh, National Blood uh, Service. I mean, what is it that you actually do as an organization? Okay, so the South African National Blood Service is an MPO, um, and we are mandated to uh, collect uh, blood, um, and I must add, collect it safely, so that we can then be able to provide the health sector with safe blood, which they can use for a number of transfusions. Mm. Mm. Um, so <coughs> normally, um, uh, w what does it entail, you know, to uh, donate blood? I mean. We would see you having, uh, you know, mini stalls in uh, various malls or just different areas across townships uh, doing a blood dona donation drive there. Mm -hmm. How, w what work, uh, you know, goes into planning that? Okay, I must say the, the work of blood collection is quite an intense um, um, work um, in terms of our value chain you will appreciate that we normally start uh, with um, just making donors aware that um, you know we do require their services um, and we call on people that are volunteers um, to come and then donate blood um, and um, what we then do is we set up uh, these blood collection sites. It could be at mobile sites. Uh, so for instance, in an organization where we've got a number of people that we can collect from, or a shopping center, as you've rightfully said, where we can collect from. But we also do have fixed sites. Those are South African National Blood Services uh, fixed sites, which we call the donor clinics, where you can then also walk in to go and have your blood um, collected. And um, during these, or at these particular collection sites, there are certain um, resources that we must put in place. Yeah. Uh, so f obviously the first resource is the human uh, resource, which is the people that make sure that we follow safe protocols in terms of collections of blood. But then there's a whole lot of equipment that uh, gets used there, you know, your testing instruments, the blood bags, uh, which the blood is then get, uh, gets put into. Um, and then linked into that, there's quite also a lot of logistics in terms of once the blood is collected, uh, for it to be packaged and then uh, transported safely to our labs where it is then uh, tested. Um, and once it's tested, it then gets um, uh, issued, what we call issuing to the various um, health facilities. So if, let's say, a hospital orders a yeah. certain number of units, uh, it then gets um, sent to, to those facilities. Mm, I mean, let's talk about uh, the blood reserves. I mean, I know that um, um, you have to collect uh, just, uh, you know, 3,500 units a day. Mm. Um, how difficult is it, you know, to reach uh, those numbers, especially when you look at a country like South Africa, whereby uh, people somehow, somehow, yes, they do donate, but 1% of the... Uh, population, population uh, being active donors, it's, mm. it's, it's a worrying factor. It is. It is certainly a worrying factor. Um, um, we would like to have this number upped um, a little bit so that we can then be able to make sure that we've got safe supply um, in, in times where we've got high demand. Yeah. So the collection of 3,500 units has got its peaks and, uh, and lows. So there are times where we are able to actually collect the 3,500 units or even more uh, on, certain, on certain days. But yeah. there are periods where we collect less than that and um, that is influenced by a number of factors. So for instance, we do quite a lot of collections at schools. Uh, we do a lot of collections at companies. So if the schools are on holiday, kids are at home, uh, we can't find them at school to go and collect. So that means that um, we then experience uh, those low collections. 
But again, I think with the advent of, um, of COVID, you've realized that a lot of people are still working from home. So not a lot of companies are still fully operational or fully have gone back to, to, uh, to work. A lot are still practicing hybrid uh, models of, of working. So that uh, tends to influence our collections. Mm -hmm. But sometimes also other things that influence the collections could be inclement weather. So you, you'll notice that that past week, uh, weekend, it was so cold. Nobody, yeah, wanted, was to, to <laughs> <laughs> nobody wanted to get out of bed. Uh, so it, it takes the special that would actually get out of bed and realize that they are doing this for a good cause um, and get out and, and go and donate. But, you know, the average South African will probably be like, hi, no, it's too cold today. Yeah. I, I, as easy <laughs> today, we're not going. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I also wanted to talk about, I mean, as you are talking about uh, the, uh, you know, challenges that uh, sometimes you face in terms of uh, collecting blood, uh, uh, you know, uh, from, from different South Africans there. Um, Normally, um, in terms of campaigns that uh, you usually have, mm -hmm. uh, just in brief before we go for an ad break, um, uh, how challenging is it, you know, to get the message across? I mean, you've got the country is the geographical uh, aspect of South Africa somewhere, somehow, you know, it has the cities, the rural areas, the informal settlements. Mm. How do you go about uh, getting the message across? So in terms of getting the message across, as you rightfully say, um, it is quite challenging. You'll notice that as a, as a South African National Blood Service, we operate in eight of the provinces in the country, with the exception of the Western Cape, which mm. is uh, managed by the Western Cape Blood Services. So to try and get messages to every corner of the eight provinces is sometimes a challenge. We rely on um, networks like yourselves to yeah. get to people. Uh, we rely on a lot on radio, we rely a lot on word of mouth, um, but we also do have um, what we call donor educators. These are people that are on the ground that actually go out into the communities and provide education and awareness campaigns just to help in terms of boosting the messages that we have on the national platforms. Mm. Uh, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to delve deep into, uh, you know, some of the work that you do as the South African National Blood Service. So we're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching So it's Today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on uh, who the South African National Blood Service are and uh, what role they fulfill in the country. Now, let's continue the conversation uh, on the need for blood donors in the country with Thursday NBS, uh, that's uh, Senior Marketing, Communications and Brand Manager, Tandi Musupe, still joining us in studio this evening. But Musupe, um, you know, one question that I wanted to ask was, you know, you collect the blood, who receives the blood? I mean, uh, we know that uh, obviously, you know, as you said earlier on, hospitals also make, uh, you know, or, uh, put in orders and all these things, but who are the people that are receiving the blood? Okay, so I think it's also quite important to emphasize that in the collection of the blood, we not only collect the blood, as I said, is we collect the blood safely, and which means that we do go quite uh, through quite a rigorous process in terms of testing the blood, right? To make sure that the blood is, uh, is safe for transfusion. Yeah. That's, the, that's the main purpose. So who then receives the blood at the end of the day? It's anybody who is um, within a healthcare facility that requires a blood transfusion. This could be a victim um, of um, an accident. Um, yeah. I think that's the popular kind of understanding in terms of people that receive blood. Um, it could be somebody who's gone through, uh, maybe suffered uh, burn wounds fr from fire. It could be somebody whose blood is just having problems in terms of clotting and you need, um, you need uh, uh, platelets to, to assist with the clotting of yeah. the blood. But um, a lot of the blood also goes to um, 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 patients, uh, cancer patients, or patients that are also undergoing a whole num number of other transfusions. We have um, blood also that goes to um, during uh, um, childbirth, mother and, and, and child, child at that yeah. time. 
when um, there's quite a lot of blood that gets lost uh, during that particular process. So there are various um, uh, beneficiaries uh, or recipients, as we call them, of these uh, blood uh, units that are so selflessly given by our donors. Mm. Um, do we have enough blood, uh, you know, stocks as a country? I mean, uh, you know, it's never enough, but uh, how are we sitting as a country? Um, we can never say we have enough uh, because the amount of blood that we collect um, or how much we can then be able to give is basically directed by what is the demand from uh, the blood, from the health facilities. So if the demand goes up, um, and the demand could go up for various reasons, yeah. more, um, you know, um, emergency um, surgeries that are required, or sometimes it's elective surgeries that are put in place that require blood. But sometimes, as we know, during the festive season period, where you've got, you know, the, those high incidents of, um, of accidents, you require the blood for trauma. Um, so we can't really say we've got sufficient blood. Um, that is why I think as a South African National Blood Service, we are always calling on, um, on donors, particularly new donors, people that have never donated blood before, to actually come up and take up this challenge of becoming a blood donor so that we can be able to increase the pool of donors that we have. I think one other thing in terms of blood donation, you mentioned that only 1% of South Africans are yeah. blood donors. So that 1% of blood donors, for us to be able to sustain the number of issues of blood that we have, it means that we have to uh, bleed them at least two times a year. So if we had uh, more people um, that are blood donors, you'll find that maybe you only need to just come and donate once a year. Um, so it is important, particularly amongst the young people. I mean, it's going to be Youth Day yeah. uh, very soon. Um, one of the things that we're calling upon, you know, as a clarion call, is for young people to take up this this challenge of blood donation. They are the future of South Africa because um, you realize that if the older people, um, you know, diminish, <laughs> yeah. then um, the young people need to take up this. Yes. Let's talk about the myths and mm -hmm. misconceptions. Uh, I mean, when it comes to blood uh, donation, there. I mean, there are people that do not believe in. Uh, uh, blood transfusion, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a result of maybe uh, culturally or religiously uh, mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, you know, not taking away the importance also mm. of uh, the whole process of, you know, the importance of uh, getting blood out there and then also respecting people's uh, beliefs and all these things. What would be the myths and uh, misconceptions that you normally find mm -hmm. as uh, uh, an organization? All right. I think as you have, you just pointed out, it is those myths and or, mis or be people's beliefs because I, I don't think that we should call them myths. We, you, we really, as a South African National Blood Service, want to, um, to respect people's uh, beliefs. Um, so it is the belief that um, if I, you know, donate blood, I'm giving away a part of me. Um, or if, um, you know, if I receive blood, because there's also the other um, side of it is the, is the, if I receive this blood, it means that I'm receiving whatever was, uh, you know, within this particular person or spirits or, or, yeah. or, you know, those kind of things. So that's quite a popular um, um, kind of misunderstanding yeah. around uh, a, a blood transfusion. Um, we, you then have... Um, you know, uh, it, it could be uh, driven through uh, culture, it could be driven through religion, and um, we, we do kind of, um, you know, if you have that kind of belief, respect that that is where you stand, and would not necessarily want to push and say, you know, come and donate and come and donate, but I think when you see the value of what your one unit of blood can do in saving someone's life, you then start to believe and appreciate that, you know, that which I have within me can actually bring life to somebody else that is in a dire uh, situation. We're going to take a quick ad break. Uh, when we come back, I want us to go to that question of uh, if there are any people who are not allowed um, to donate, yes or no. I'm not sure if uh, th th there would be a case like that whereby I would get into, uh, a, you know, a donation center and then be chased out uh, or be told 
that uh, I, I cannot uh, donate blood, but you will explain that uh, for us when we come back after the ad break. Uh, do stay where you are. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we still continue the conversation on blood donation in South Africa. Still joining us in studio is Tandi Musupia, who is the Marketing Communications and Brand Manager at the South African National Blood Service. She's still joining me in studio this evening. Mr. Supia, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, um, you know, the question that's very important now is who is not eligible? you know, to donate blood. I mean, you talk about people that have, you know, questions like people that have had uh, tattoos, uh, people who maybe did drugs. And some people may, might even ask if maybe I had unprotected sex yesterday. Can I still go to uh, the, uh, the donor centers and, 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 and give blood there? What happens? Okay, so in terms of people that are not allowed to donate or people that do get uh, deferred, there are a number of medical conditions that, are, that get deferred. I think in most instances, the best is to, um, you know, get onto our website or call our contact center just to get a list of those deferrals. Yeah. But just in general, I think what's important to understand around blood donation is that um, you have to l live a safe lifestyle, right? So meaning that uh, from your sexual uh, lifestyle and practice, it must be one that you regard as safe, uh, where you can also be able to look at yourself. I always say, look at yourself and say, if I were to um, be in a situation where I need blood, would I want to get my own blood, um, you know, if I, yeah. if I live the kind of life that I, I do live? So there are certain things like obviously the, you know, the, the, um, uh, the general things like your tattoos and things like that. We do have deferral periods for those. Um, but thereafter, once you've uh, passed the three months deferral period uh, on, on the day, from the day that you've had the tattoo, then you can safely go and, uh, and donate. I think it's just to protect because obviously, you know, as you're doing uh, tattoos, there is um, an opportunity for your skin to be cut yeah. open and just to protect and make sure that there is nothing that has actually um, impacted um, in, into your blood. Uh, but with the, um, if you have um, had um, uh, uh, fun the night before, yeah. um, it, 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 it really depends on the circumstances on which you've, um, you've actually engaged in sexual activity. As I said, um, a, a safe lifestyle um, um, yeah, is, is very important. So if you are in a one um, a relationship, uh, um, then it, it shouldn't be um, a, a, a problem if both of you, you and your partner, are both safe. Let's talk about the um, you know blood type that is needed um, um, critically most. right now and why. Which, okay. which, which blood type is okay. it? Blood type uh, group O is a, a group uh, blood that we um, always, always go out to call for. And the reason is because uh, uh, blood group O uh, blood can be given to any other blood group in a in, um, case of emergency. So um, you will f uh, find that in areas like in the rural areas where it might be uh, difficult to find a cross match unit, if there's blood group O, uh, in our emergency fridges, because we do have blood fridges in some of the, these hospitals, yeah. then a blood group O uh, will then be uh, transfused. It can safely be transfused to that particular group. But it is also an important group of blood because uh, blood group O's can only receive blood from blood group O, so they yeah. can't receive blood from other groups. So it makes it quite a unique and uh, very important uh, blood group. Mm. I mean, uh, World Blood Donor Day is upon us. I mean, in your opinion, um, are these days, you know, effective in raising awareness uh, for blood donors or do they just, uh, you know, fly by? The days are effective. Um, and I'll tell you why the days are effective is because on those particular days, we do then get to shine the spotlight. Uh, firstly, in terms of appreciating our donors, like World Blood Donor Day, which is happening uh, tomorrow. Um, on our donors and appreciating uh, what they do from a, 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 you know, a blood donation point of view. Educating as well of people that have not necessarily haven't come into contact with any of our education material. But it is also an opportunity to 
um, you know, to play back stories of people that have received blood. Um, and, and, and in that way, hope that um, it will change someone's mind that has not necessarily seen uh, the need uh, to donate. So it does, um, it does really help. We would like for these to happen quite, um, you know, frequently so that we can then be able to have a sustainable uh, supply of blood. As we wrap up the conversation, I mean, what would be your message to ordinary South Africans out there uh, that are still skeptical, you mm -hmm. know, about going out there to donate blood? Mm. Uh, you know, emphasizing on the messaging, uh, the importance of donating blood yeah. as it would save lives there. Mm. What would be the message? And also if for people, if they want to get in touch with you guys, mm. where can they find you? Okay. So um, I think what's important around blood donation and the message that I'd like to leave the viewers with is that your unit of blood, which I think from when you look at, um, you know, you, you look at yourself, you might think that this is not important, but one unit of blood can save up to three lives because as I explained, the, the blood can be split into three uh, yeah. components. So it means that each person, they can you can save three people from your one unit of blood. So that's, that's very, very important. Um, and then secondly, it's that understanding that, you know, if you are in the age group of 16 to 75, really, um, unless there is, um, you know, something that makes you not to be legible to, draw, to, to, to donate blood, there isn't any reason why you shouldn't come forth and come and donate blood. Because this is something that will save the country, um, but, you know, give life to, to, to other people. Um, and um, I think finally, in terms of getting hold of us, uh, we've got uh, donor centers across uh, South Africa. We've got mobile clinics that are happening at shopping centers, at schools, at community halls. So pop in there and, um, you know, get uh, some education around blood donation. But you can also visit our, our website, uh, the South African National Blood Service website. Follow us on our social media pages. We post our contact center number also there so that people can call in if they've got questions that they would like to ask about uh, blood donation. We super much appreciate it. We hope that uh, South Africans will rally behind the clarion call that you are making as a South African National Blood Service that to go out there in their numbers and uh, you know save lives as uh, we've been talking about. Much appreciated for coming in. Thank you very much. That was uh, Tandi Musupie, the South African National Blood Service Senior Marketing Communications and Brand Manager, giving us information on just how crucial blood donation is in the country and what more we can do to assist in this as we get ready for World Blood Donor Day. That's how we wrap up today's episode of So to Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at today at sowetotv.co.za. Or you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bye, it's Yuri Dilehulikani from myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team. It's good night from us, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news updates coming right up next with Pretty Gwenya.